probably re recorded. All right, um, we have just concluded a uh, closed session for the board, and we are now voted and gone back into open session. And we have one member still participating um, by a phone, which is Mike Brandt. All the other board members are here in person, so we should now take a motion to approve the agenda. Do you want to do public comments first? Oh, yes, public comments are first, and there are none. Yeah, there are. There. Don't we have two that asked to be read? Um, one of them did not provide a name, and according to our policy, you are required to provide a name and your address to make a public comment. I informed them of that. They did not reply. Um, the other one did not, the WTA did not ask for that to be read as a public comment. That was okay. just questions, I think, to the school district and the board in uh, general. Yeah, they actually asked that that be read tonight. Yeah, this one came in the second. That's oh. That's different than what we saw last night. Okay. Um, so we do have one public comment from the Wanaki Teachers Association. Uh, members of the Board of Education of the Wanaki Community School District, the WTA leadership would like to thank you all for your attention to the following matters outlined below in response to multiple inquiries from the greater WTA membership regarding the upcoming reopening of Wanaki schools. We have concerns regarding the personal protective equipment that will be available to staff. While special education teams reportedly will have access to Badger Shield prototypes, other staff members have been told to use their own protective gear or use their school budgets to cover the cost of this equipment. Still others have heard nothing about PPE. If staff are responsible for purchasing this equipment, it most likely will not arrive in time for in-person meetings this week. COVID-19 cases remain high across the country, state, and region, and the CDC asserts that schools may be a driving factor of community transmission. The WTA is grateful for the opportunity to ensure that via designated seats on a board organized committee, in addition to continued solicitation of educator input, teachers will participate in the urgent decision making process surrounding the metrics that will be used to determine school closure and reopening procedures. The district has established clear protocols for staff safety, sanitization, and social distancing, including health forms which district staff are required to sign in order to gain entry into school buildings. What will the appropriate actions and procedures be if these guidelines are not followed by staff or administration? Examples of deviations from these protocols already are being reported to us. We appreciate the board and administration's attention to and willingness to thoroughly explore these issues as the district continues to prepare for the weeks ahead. We thank you also for your dedication to the creation of firm, clear, detailed plans for reopening one key schools in order to ensure that all stakeholders, community members, and educators alike can play their respective roles in keeping schools safe for all this fall. Sincerely, WTA leadership. Um, did you want to mention? If I can just add, add something to that, Dave. I mean, as far as the PPE, I mean, you saw that was shared by Mr. Ely at the last board meeting. Um, as far as the primary PPE for any staff and students is, is the face mask and face coverings. We have thousands of those in stock, so anyone who doesn't have one, we certainly are able to provide that and we'll be doing so. Um, the other piece with regards to some of the protocol aspects and just making sure everybody is on the same page with understanding what we're doing as a school district and so our staff are informed and have a place where they can find all that information. Um, Annie's been working on for the last few days a a guideline for school reopening for staff that's in the editing phase right now we'll be getting it and we'll be moving that towards them it basically is kind of a one-stop place that can articulate the different pieces with reopening some of these protocols expectations etc okay um, and approval of agenda and additions is there a motion to approve motion Second. to approve Second. jack Joan. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? And that takes us into consideration of options for referendum resolutions. In this, uh, well, let me just take a moment, Dave, just to kind of reiterate what Steve took some time at the last board meeting to cover. 
and he's unable to be with us this evening. But as he shared with you prior, um, he wanted to make sure that all your questions were answered uh, at the last meeting. But he did include a very detailed memo in tonight's board book um, for your review. Really what's in front of you tonight is an option for um, freeing up some dollars that we um, currently are levying through Fund 39 um, with regards to debt repayment or early debt repayment and being able to then reallocate that to Fund 10 so we can use it um, for the needs regarding to, related to COVID-19, reopening schools, and certainly also with a, a precursor to looking forward that if there are any sort of shortfalls within the, the larger state budget and any impacts on us as a school district, that we have a means to access funds to be able to cover some of those expenses. Um, Steve shared with you other strategies that we're employing at the last meeting, but the one in front of you tonight requires a referendum. Um, so just as a point of, of iteration, uh, last fall we did a debt defeasance for $2.1 million. You see that articulated in the memo that Steve sent to you. And that is for prepayment of debt in, in Fund 39. Um, what the proposal is in front of you is to get consideration of bringing this to our voters in November um, so that we could have a vote to exceed the revenue caps by $2.1 million, that exact number, which in essence allows us to really utilize those dollars not in Fund 39 but in Fund 10 for our general purposes. So the, the net impact of this on our taxpayers is, is a zero um, tax impact because it's really dealing with just a, a, fun, a transfer of where those dollars are going to be levied and expended either in Fund 39 or in Fund 10. Um, the piece that's in front of you though, it gives us two options. So in the, in the agenda are four different items. Let me just take a minute to explain what those are. One of them is a resolution to go to referendum for a recurring purpose and then the second part is actually the ballot information on a recurring basis for that referendum and then the subsequent um, agenda items are if we choose to do this on a five-year non-recurring basis and then again the resolution and the ballot language. So the conversation in front of the board tonight is one, do you want to move forward with a referendum in November to be able to access the money that will be currently scheduled to be levied in Fund 39 and move that to Fund 10 so we have access to it? That's the first question. And then the second is how would you like to structure that? Would that be recurring or non-recurring? Once we have a direction from the board on how you'd like to move forward, then the actions that we need to take are in association with um, that specific approach. So the next part could be just in case I know that, you know, Brian hasn't been on the board that long, so this has only been here a couple of years, haven't gone through the referendum. If there's basic <coughs> questions you want to know about the referendum or how it would work or anything like that, I think we should cover those first <coughs> just to make sure we're all clear on what this entails. Do you have any questions, Brian, or anything? Not yeah, really. No, I'm okay. doing the research. I mean, three of us here have been through a referendum before, but three of us haven't. So, do you have any questions? We're all pretty clear after last week's, I was going to say last month's meeting, last week's meeting. Um, Mike, do you have anything? No, I'm good. Okay. In which case, then, um, we would obviously be available open to a motion um, we have basically they drew up two resolutions one that has a five-year date and one that, that's recurring which means it would keep going unless there was a future action is there <coughs> anyone wanting to make a motion at this time i'll make the uh, motion for the uh five five uh five year sunset second okay. mark seconded is there any discussion? So what do you see the money being used for after we pay for the COVID expenses? I think part of the question is going to be, and part of what, what Steve outlined in his memo to the board 
was some of the unknowns with regards to the, the future impacts of COVID, either it being um, enrollment impacts, it could be a, a repair bill coming from the state, and then if that is permanent or not permanent. Um, and, and some of those aspects then needing to really pick up those costs. So um, do you see any of those costs as reoccurring? I think our staff. Do we need to hire any staff that we can reoccur? Yeah, I, I think that's uh, there's certainly some aspects of it that, that could be recurring, Joan, but I think that there's also some of these that we know are definitely the COVID related ones we hope are, are going to be one time expenses that as we kind of move through are going to um, correct themselves where we don't have to have that level of expense. There are going to be potentially some impacts of, of COVID that may hit us in subsequent um, budget amounts. I mean, that's where I, I would, in the five-year piece, I think, gives us enough time to work its way through that. If it was a one-year piece, I would have concerns with that short of a duration. Um, one of the conversations I know Steve shared was kind of the impacts on future referendums, and that's that's a bit of projection as far as someone knows there, because even if it was recurring, there would be pieces that wouldn't necessarily prevent you from needing to go to referendum in the future for other needs. Um, so I think it's kind of a question, Joan, of of if it was non-recurring, probably looking at trying to articulate some of those things that don't have as many of the ongoing costs, but realizing that if there was a budget repair bill type of thing, those are going to be recurring pieces, particularly if that was uh, a permanent impact. But that there's going to be a point where I think you're going to be at referendum at another point in the future, and you're going to have to make decisions on the capital side and they exceed the revenue cap piece. And, you know, I understand having a somewhat five years and to that but I hope as a board we start pointing to a reoccurring referendum for people you know Randy has laid out a restructuring um, plan and we need reoccurring referendum money to attack that restructuring plan we have very large class sizes. I don't know if some of them will shrink with what's happening currently. But we, you know, I don't want to lose sight that we're a people business. We need, we need to support our people that are in this business. That's what makes one key break is our staff and allowing Randy to lead the way he wants to with the dollars to do the restructuring that he has laid out. And is this an opportunity for us to do the reoccurring to help fund some of that? Um, you know, I, I can see it both ways. I, I get having a sunset, but I also know that we've talked about that restructuring and there's never money for any of those positions. Mark? I appreciate it. Everything you've said, John, 100%. My concern is that uh, the primary modus behind this is giving the district insurance for underfunded consequences due to the pandemic, uh, including the budget repair bill that could be significant. Um, and so that's our focus. We do this for the five years. And if you want the other piece, which could really require more than what we have here. This, this is a minimalist thing I agree. to cut to ba basically safeguard the district's health, economic health. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'd, I'd prefer to see the five year sunset on it. If we wanted to do the other piece, then I'd like to see a bigger one yeah, that's that, that truly addresses I mean the staffing is huge possibly more number one than the, the maintenance budget. But the maintenance budget is a 20-year mountain that we've got, to, that we do have to talk to the community about. I just don't want to start using 
this as the wedge to those things. And and I and agree. Why I support the five. I, I don't know if this is the time. I just don't want to lose sight no. of the need for reoccurring dollars no to move our people forward. Right. Um, you know, I agree with Joan. I agree with Jack. And I agree with Mark. <laughs> I, I would hope, you know, my big my big thing is I don't want, if we had to have to do this again in a crucial year, it'd take away, and if I, rem if I remember from last week, it would possibly take away one out of two <coughs> questions or on a referendum or what. Well, if, if it, but I'm hoping within five years we're having a bigger referendum to take care of our facilities again. So I, I think five years is far enough out to be able to get another referendum for schools still um, in there. So I agree with everything everyone's saying, but I agree. I like the five-year sunset. I think it gives enough time for us to get what we need to get done and have that cushion. I would like to make an amendment to make it recurring and eliminate the five year. And before I can discuss that, is there a second? Second. All right, the reason I'm doing this is, a couple years back, we came up with, and you guys have seen this spreadsheet once or twice, the facility maintenance plan. Right now, we're $20 million behind on keeping up with it. We've had some discussion with that at the facilities committee that maybe that $20 million number is a bit high and that we can structure down against that. Um, but just looking at the next four years, we average almost $2 million a year in maintenance. We don't have that money right now. We, don't have, we won't have the money over the next five years to cover that because we're really only putting about, what, $600,000 roughly a year into the maintenance budget. So we're gonna get behind every single year. And in, when you look out at the five-year average, the 10-year average, the 15 and the 20-year average on this sheet, every single year averages $4 million a year. There, this isn't even close. We can do this and it won't be enough in five years. It'll be enough to get you through the next five years. And that's assuming we're not spending a big hunk of this $2 million a year on COVID and the repair bill. I would like to see this recurring only because it takes one issue off the table in future referendums. It does take care of maintenance. And really a lot of what we're looking at COVID right now would be covered by the maintenance budget. In fact, we've burned up almost all of this year's maintenance <coughs> budget already on the COVID by doing the air, the air items, um, air cleaning, and by doing some of the um, supply stuff, the maintenance budget is pretty much already gone this year. And we're talking about this as being even more above that. And the biggest thing is we're gonna have to make up for everything we took out of maintenance already this year. The truth is we spend this $2 million roughly the last couple of years, and we're gonna keep doing it in the future to pay down our debt. And the reason we do that is because our community has grown and grows every year onto the property tax base. That's where that $2 million is coming from. And it allows us to do it with absolutely no tax effect to the public. The advantage of doing it early is, as you know, just like taking care of your house, the sooner you do it, the better. The longer you do it, the more increased cost it becomes. And then, if we don't do it this way, in a couple of years from now, you might, in five years, you might be able to see some version of a tax decrease. But then what happens after that? You have to do a bigger referendum, you have a bigger tax increase, and you're doing that up and down peak thing that drives people crazy. Because you're not, you're not taxing the community based on the needs of the community. You're taxing based on when does an election fall. I think the idea of stabilizing the property tax base is the best thing we can do. People know how much they're gonna be paying. They're knowing it's gonna be generally zero. We created the maintenance plan in order to get that effect. Now we have an opportunity to start it and we're saying we shouldn't, or maybe we shouldn't. That was the same idea about building the middle school and timing that and using heritage as a bigger elementary school was to try and get it so that when we're doing things, we're using the growth in the community to pay for it, not going back to current taxpayers and hitting them with the tax increase. And no matter how much you think a tax decrease is a good thing, 
I guarantee it's twice as bad negative when you go back and have to make up for it again, which you will have to do. I think you, yeah. well, um, you to be fair, Jack hasn't spoken yeah. yet. Well, I guess, uh, you know, I, I agree that, uh, you know, putting the uh, two-year, you know, $2 million into uh, budgets, but the problem that I've got uh, is one, you know, we're, we're, to Mark's point, we're bringing this out as a uh, COVID uh, kind of a repair, making sure that uh, the government, making sure that we've got the budget to uh, keep the uh, district uh, solid financially. And, uh, you know, I guess the other challenge that I've got is that we can't commu commit future boards to spending this on maintenance. So we can, we can sit there and say, okay, we're, today we're uh, putting uh, $2 million aside into uh, perpetuity, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, there's no guarantee that that money is gonna go to maintenance. Uh, it could go to other, uh, other programs uh, within the district. So, so basically, uh, you know, I think the uh, best opportunity that we have to pass anything is if we uh, focus on the uh, COVID because uh, we need it. There is definitely uh, a need that, that is out there. So I, uh, I will not uh, support a uh, perpetuity. Make a compelling argument, uh, but within the argument, it, it shows why I think there's faultiness with, that, with where you're going because we don't know how much of this we're not going to be able to need for the next five years because of COVID, quite frankly. If you just look at the budget process, we don't know what, what's going to happen the next budget cycle from the state. How much are we going to need for, to, to balance that thing off? Um, if there is money left over, should we be putting it all to maintenance or do we need some of the uh, staff structure and things that, that we've been talking about for two or three years here for, uh, for a better system? And there's not enough, this isn't the golden egg to solve our problems. It, it, what it is, it's a temporary solution to keep us solvent when our numbers could be drastically unpredictable over the next 18 months. And I think all of those ring for a short, shorter term, the five year with the sunset. And then, okay, even two years out, we could start looking at the operating, what needs going on to really achieve both the maintenance and the staffing issues. But to try to pretend this is a solution in the, for the long term, I. I don't think that's, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I think, all right, we've shown over the last two years, we vote the $2 million to go to get payment anyway. If for some reason, you're, the possibility that Corona doesn't consume this amount, since it's in Fund 10, we could send it towards paying off the debt anyway, correct? If they decided to. Also, if it was decided to, any of this amount of money could go towards staff, correct? So all we're doing is taking the $2 million that we vote on every year as a board to pay towards debt and say from now on, that $2 million could go towards debt or something else. We have not impacted the taxpayer one dime more, and we've stabilized more of the budget. I don't see why that's a bad thing. Uh, and if we sit there and say we'll do it for a short term and then come back, I, <laughs> I know I for one hate the idea of trying to play every budget through referendum. And the more you do that, the worse it gets. If, you're, if we think there's a staff shortage, which we've been told multiple times, that it is coming in one way or another, why do we want to add more referendums on top of it? It gives you a greater chance that the public will just say, you guys aren't planning. You know, we had that with the referendum a couple years back and it failed and the, the biggest argument against that referendum was you didn't plan. We're being told we need it in perpetuity, either based on maintenance or staff, and we're we'll probably have to do more, so why are we voting a short term 
just so we have to vote again. Add it on top of whatever other votes we have. Is, is this reoccurring? Can it be reversed at for future boards? Once it's voted as recurring, then you you have the authority as a board to continue that. You don't have to always levy it. It gives you the ability to levy up to that amount, but it would it would prevent you from needing to go back, and you would be then given that authority moving forward for this board or any subsequent. So they and could set the levy lower. Right. And if we built over the next four years <laughs> two new schools. How much of that maintenance i know we always have maintenance but how much of that big maintenance item goes away with heritage and middle school um, no, I don't, there is a large number that goes there you also have done the cost of those new schools where some of it would be a shift depending on what that where that went there would be some cost shifting but when we looked at it in the facilities committee of that 20 million dollars i want to say there's about six or eight involving heritage but then the minute you built the new school, yes, there is more. But the worst part is all the future stuff over the next 20 years didn't really matter. Yeah. Those numbers were going to stay roughly the same. So you were still looking at um, an average of $2 million over the next four years and an average of $4 million after that. You know, I think one of the things, uh, we're going to lose students, I believe, uh, with the uh, referendum. Uh, there's, uh, or not the referendum, but with the COVID. Yeah and our decisions that we made. Uh, you, you've got parents uh, ascending to uh, St. John's and uh, you know some of the other programs, uh, some of the virtual academies. So we really don't know, you know, from a staffing standpoint, you know, how does that impact us, uh, you know, over time. Uh, you know, I've talked to uh, people in the uh, community, uh, you know, about the uh, referendum and, you know, I think uh, the best chance that we have in getting something passed in uh, November is by having a sunset clause. So, you know, we can have all the arguments that we want about future needs and so forth, but if you look at how do we get something passed so that uh, financially we're not strapped, the five-year sunset is probably the uh, best option. I kind of a, agree with Dave in the sense that we need to be forward-looking in maintenance, but forward-looking in staffing and forward-looking in the planning that Brandy has. And I think that we have the support of the community behind us. So many people, when the COVID started, were so much in favor of keeping our schools running and in good shape and supportive of what we've done. I think this shows our planning for increasing um, the continued quality of our education and looking forward to that and not looking at if we're going to lose kids I, I just don't see there's not a crystal ball but I think we've got a track record of excellence and I think we need to support that financially so I, I guess I'm in favor of not a sunset just a, a recurring one um, Mike just to make sure do you, would you want to make a comment no I, I we really can't hear you. We're, you're fading out, Mike. I just wanted to say, I, I don't think I can top what Judy just said. I think I agree with her 100%. Don't have any better. Okay. If I can clarify a couple of things, Dave. One is the three different points. One, you asked a question as could of, if it's in Fund 10, can you divert it then to pay off debt in Fund 39? Off the top of my head, I'm not sure if you can just pay from Fund 10 to Fund 39. The second part, to Jack's point with regards to enrollment, I anticipate that there will be some impacts there. Remember, that's a three-year rolling average in order to then recoup those. So even if you had people return over after we get past COVID, that's a three-year impact before we recapture those full numbers. It's a three-year rolling average on the revenue cap. Um, the third point is just as we make this motion, if we're... Mike, could you mute, please? If we were recurring or non-recurring, I just want to line it up with the resolutions in front of us so that I'm clear for Rebecca. 
because there are very specific things that we would have to vote on. One is being the resolution, which there's the recurring or the non-recurring. So whichever way your motion goes, I will count that as towards the resolution. And then there'll have to be a subsequent vote after that, that whatever passes, that would be with regards to the ballot question. And those both are required, and then there's a roll call process for each of those. So, so Mark, you have comment? Um, I don't think I'm misstating this. If COVID wasn't here, if the budget repair bill were not staring us in the face, this wouldn't be our question tonight. Those are the two issues where our extremely creative business manager director came forth with this concept to, to get us through this period. The idea wasn't to throw out a referendum to take care of maintenance and staff. And if we're going to do that, that to me should be a different referendum. Uh, I don't want to confuse the public what our needs are right now. Those are our needs. But what we're asking for is get through this period of time healthy. And if we then want to look at a maintenance plan for the future, uh, it, and not just maintainers. That we're, we're, John was alluding to adding staff that we haven't added for years in many areas because the budgets aren't there. It's not just maintaining what we have, it's expanding to give things we aren't doing yet. Well, that's a different referendum, and, and that should be long term. But to me, this is, Steve brought this forward because we have these issues staring at us. And so, uh, uh, Julian, Dave, yours takes advantage of, of the opportunity to maybe redirect some of that, but how much of it is going to get redirected? And so, I encourage us to all go with the uh, five or sunset. I'd like to call the question. Motion to call the question. Is there a second? Second. So if there's no debate on calling the question. All those in favor of calling the question and ending debate say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. So the question is called. Currently we are voting only on the amendment, which is to change from five years to recurring. All those in favor of change, and we have to do it by roll call because it's on right. this. So even the amendment has to be by roll Let's call. Let's do that just so we're clear. So we're voting. Can you state that again? What are we voting on? We are voting on the amendment, which is to just take Jack's motion, delete the five years, and make it recurrent. Okay. Then we'll still have to vote on the motion itself. So just on the amendment, we have to do it by roll call. Mark? Nay. Jack? Nay. Judy? Yay. Brian? Nay. Joan? Um, nay. And um, Mike? Aye. And I'll be aye. So the amendment fails, which takes us back to the original one, keeping it at five years. Can we just vote on it? No. Uh, we, have to. We, vote, we have to vote on it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So we're back on the original motion. Do we have to uh, call the uh, question so that we can just yeah. vote no, on it? You don't have to call the question. I'm just calling the question. Making a comment. Jack wants to call the question. Is there a second to call the question? Second. So now this is just to end discussion of the motion. So for ending discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed aye. to ending discussion? And we're now voting on passing this motion with a five-year sunset. Okay, let's get a clarification of so Randy. Right, so what, what Jack's motion was, was to um, approve the resolution to move to referendum this fall for the $2.1 million as outlined in the agenda of the resolution um, on a five-year non-recurring basis. Right. So it's actually, if you take a look at your agenda, it's item 7C. It's 7C, resolution authorizing the school district's budget to exceed revenue limits by $2,127,502 per year for five years for non-recurring purposes. That's what this budget is. So, going by roll call, Mark? Aye. Jack? Aye. Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. 
Joan? Aye. Mike? Aye. And I'll be aye. Okay. <coughs> so then the second no. item is that we need to provide, we need a motion for the resolution providing for a referendum election on the question of the approval of a resolution authorizing the school district budget to exceed revenue limits by $2,127,502 per year for five years for non-recurring purposes. So move. Second. Any discussion? And we have to go roll call again. Mark? Aye. Aye. Jack? Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Joan? Aye. Mike? And I'm not. Okay, so that takes care of well, the other one. So then we go to the individual co curricular contract recommendation. I just add one thing after that. It's all the next process is, is that Rebecca and I will be working with getting all of those pieces posted. Accordingly, for the referendum, we have some ballot pieces we have to get out to our clerks. We also need to be then promoting the informational items with regards to this referendum. Um, in the very, very near future because we know that for the November um, election there's going to be a number of absentee ballots which I believe come out in like mid-September. So we are going to have to pull together all of our communication pieces with regard to that. So just kind of a precursor to some of the work we have ahead of us and some of the paperwork we'll be filing here in the next few days. <coughs> So next is the individual co-curricular contract recommendations. As you were shown in closed session, to involve the individual teachers in their contracts. Um, we have a list presented this month that has some of the positions getting a one-time payment and some not being submitted at this time, but maybe later on in the fall, depending on how those various teams or organizations scheduled to be able to meet the COVID requirements. I make the uh, motion to uh, pass the, uh, as presented in the uh, closed session. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. And that's approved. Future, oh, um, I'm gonna bring up one thing of information if anyone is interested in running for the seat on the WASB executive board for our region, your packet would have to be in by September 17th. So I have the information for you if anybody wants to get, run for that seat. Um, we're one of the few that are up this year. Can't remember how many it was this year. I think it's like six or less. Um, so if you want that information, you can. That meeting is also coming up in September. Uh, future agendas and meetings, you wanted to present uh, approval for three meetings. Well, let, two. Me, two. Let, let me just kind of talk about, when we met last week, we, we made a decision to schedule tonight. So this was a special meeting we normally didn't have on our agenda, even when we set off all of our COVID meetings. When I look forward to, we're, we're scheduled right now to meet on August 24th. Right now, I don't have a pressing item for that meeting, but I don't want to take it off of the list yet because if we cancel that meeting and something comes up in the next week, I then have to go through a full special meetings process. What I'd like to do is hold that meeting if I don't need it by the end of this week, just cancel. But I would also there like to ask... What's that? There's no issue with the public announcement. No, as long as it's, it's yeah, it would just be we would we would make the announcement at work with Annie. We'd let all of our clerks put it up on social media, etc. So we can make that decision by the end of the week uh, that if we're going to roll with it or not. The second thing I'd like is for us to consider at least scheduling as an additional meeting, one on August 31st and one on September 8th, for really the same purpose to get it on the books. If we don't need it, we will just cancel it. Um, but I could foresee potentially August 31st being a time where we can touch base before school starts, if there's any other items that need to come forward. And just with some of the unknowns of what's going on with public health right now, I'd at least like to have these scheduled, and I will promise I'll cancel them if I don't absolutely need them. So that's what I'm requesting. So, so you need we already have one on the 24th. We'll keep that one. 
and I would request the 31st, which is a Monday, we could do a 6 p.m., and then September 8th is a Tuesday, um, that being at 6 p.m., and then if we don't need them, um, Dave and I will touch base and we will cancel them. You need a motion on that? Yeah. Make a motion to add these extra meetings uh, with the understanding that if they're not needed, they're canceled. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. And motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. <laughs> or are you just stunned it's not midnight yet? <laughs> Thank you, Juan.